Hello and welcome to the Daily Coaching Lockdown Football Training Session. So today's session number 35 and today I have four key parts to our session for you. The first one will be starting off with a warm-up, then moving into a ball mastery exercise, then an accuracy challenge and then finishing up with a ball juggling challenge, okay? Now what I need you to do for the warm-up is you need a space, you need four objects. I've got cones, but if you don't have access to cones, anything such as jumpers, jackets, t-shirts, toilet rolls or cans, anything you can get in yourself um, around the house and you need a ball. So once you have your space, once you have your four objects, and once you have your ball, we're ready to go. Cool, so for this warm up, what you're going to do is you're going to set out your four objects like so, okay? So you've got kind of like a bit of a diamond, but the top point of the diamond, okay, the object of the cone is uh, the furthest point away um, in comparison to the ones at the side, okay? Then ones are a little bit closer, uh, the one at the top of the diamond is really quite far away, so we get some real length between that and our starting area. Now to begin with, you don't need the ball, so you're going to put the ball just down to the side, okay? And to begin with, what's going to happen is you start at the bottom point of the diamond, Okay, and you're going to make it go in a motion of one, two, and three. Okay, so the first one we're going to go run around, back to the middle point, then to the second one, which is a bit further away, back to the starting point, then round to the third one, and then go back round again. Okay, so round the first one, round the second, round the third. And then you're starting again. Okay, you're trying to get some quick speed, some quick movement, and you're going to get some change to the direction. We're going to have about 30 seconds to a minute and see how many times we can get around these three different points of our diamond. Okay, three, two, one, go. Right, first one, second, third, and start again. And cool, and three is there. So, you can go in a one, two, three motion, or you can go in the opposite direction. So, go three, then two, then one, if you wanted to, okay, or you can go the original way around. Okay, the key thing here getting lots of movement involved. Forwards, changing direction, quick speed, slowing down, varying those different movements. Change the direction, change the speed. Next, doing exactly the same, but with the ball. Okay, so if I go into one, two, three motion again, travel around, then run a second one, then run a third. And then I will start again. Okay, so again, we're going to do about 30 seconds a minute using combinations of left, right foot, different parts of the feet, inside, outside, solid foot, laces, um, and just trying to move the ball, keep it under control, and take it to the final journey. Three, two, one, go. Round the first, then round the second, then round the third. Start again. One more time. Do try to avoid the objects if you can. Keep a tight, close control of the ball. And we've got three there. So the key thing is that when we're moving with the ball, we're really trying to think about getting loads of touches on the ball. Okay, using both my left foot, right foot, 
different parts of the thing, move in the ball, keep it under control, and take it with us on our journey. Now, the third and final part is basically um, you can either do this by yourself and react by using different numbers and going to different combinations. So, if you're working by yourself, you might go, okay, first I'm going to go to number two, next I'm going to go to number three. Then number two again. Then number one. Then number three. Then number one. Then number two. And so on. Okay, so you're varying the combinations of different movements. Not always then one, two, three, or three, two, one. Mixing it up, right? Three, then one, then two, or two, then one, then three, or two, then three, then one, so on, or react to somebody's call. So if you have somebody else there with you to assist you and to see what you're doing, they might shout out number three. And number three. Back to the start. Number one. That's number one. Number three. Quick move the camera, that's number three. Number two. Number three, ready to react to the ball under control, and connect with the tool number three. Number one, number two, and number one, and back to the stop. Okay, so key things here three different steps. Number one, without the ball, number two, with the ball. Okay, going in a one, two, three, or three, two, one motion. Then third challenge is by yourself, just varying up those combinations. So if you're going three, two, one, or uh, two, one, three, um, or three, one, two, okay? Just trying to get a mix of different variations. We're going short, long, short, long, long, short, um, and so on, okay? And if there's somebody else here with you, then they can shout out the number so we get a bit more of a realistic reaction, really forcing us to have that ball under control, okay? And think about how to react by moving the ball as quickly as you can under control to where we need to get to, okay? And then obviously back to the beginning. Good, nice ones get us warmed up physically, okay? Also getting lots of touch from the ball, really effective for our warm up. Give it a try and see how you get on. Cool, so that was our warm up. So remember some of the key points to take away from the warm up is it's all about different types of movements, okay? Movements on the ball and off the ball. We're just thinking about changes of speed and changes of direction to be able to get us around the objects and back to our starting position, okay? So that was the movements off the ball. On the ball, it was again, similar movements, okay? Think about how to travel quickly with the ball, how to slow down with the ball under control, and obviously how to keep the ball uh, under control whilst also changing our direction. And the key thing about it was it was getting lots of touches on the ball, lots of different variations between our left foot and our right foot, okay? And then combining those movements together and just understanding how using different parts of our feet will effectively create different outcomes on the ball. So to help us change our direction, help keep it under control, help take it on a journey, okay, and also how to change direction as well. Okay, really key thing with that one, lots of repetition, lots of opportunities to get some a better understanding around how to travel with that ball, okay, and as I always say, becoming comfortable and confident in moving the ball using our left foot, right foot, and combining those movements together. Cool, now we're gonna move into our ball mastery exercise, and for this you need a space, you need a ball and you need two objects. So keep two of the objects which you had from the last exercise and then bring them over to this one. So once you have your two objects, once you have your space, and once you have your ball, we're ready to go. Cool, so for this ball master exercise, what you're going to do is you're gonna get two objects and lay them out like so. So it's almost creating a bit of a gate, okay? You have a bit of a gap or a space in between the two items, all right? Cool, now what's gonna happen is in this exercise, we're looking at the ball mastery technique of using the sole of our foot. So to begin with, all I want you to do is start with the ball just slightly behind the gate or the space which you have available in between the two objects. And if you use your left or right foot, okay, and all you're going to do is move the ball through that gap and through that space using the sole of the foot and pushing the ball. So I'm going to start with my left foot, so as an example, I do little touches just to push the ball forward. Once I get through and onto the opposite side of my gap or space, I'm then just going to pull the ball backwards using my sole of my foot as well, okay? So little touches just to pull it back as well. Once I get here, again, sole push, and then sole pull, and then sole push, and then sole pull, and so on. Okay, a bit for about 30 seconds. 
Don't do it for any longer, okay, because you can obviously have gas compressing in between, but you do start to feel it burn on the foot which you're not using. So just make sure you keep it nice and light on that foot, okay, and, and add a little bit of spring to your step there to make sure that movement is more fluid and there's more room through, okay? So three, two, one, and go. Toe push, toe pull. Push, toe pull. Push. Get a lot of touches on the ball, okay? And then come to more and actually executing or performing this type of technique and movement on and with the ball. 15 more seconds. Then we'll take them to our opposite foot. So if you're using your left, down with your right, if you're using your right, down with your left. Exactly the same. Okay, nice and light on the foot, which we're not using. And just loads of touches to either push or pull the ball through that gap, through that space, using the sole of our foot. Okay, the key thing here is always balance, making sure we're keeping our body balanced so we're not. Dipping over, last couple. Cool, okay, and key thing with that exercise, make sure you're getting lots of touches on the ball, okay? Pushing and pulling the ball using the soles of our feet. This time we're going to use a mixture of our two, left and right foot, okay? So as an example, start with the end behind, moving it, pushing it forward to my left and my right, once it gets on the opposite side, pulling back, with my left and right as well, okay? Um, again, don't do as much of burn this time because it's obviously not just one foot you're using in isolation. You need to make sure two, but really again, before we keep lasting like our toes, we have to react and be able to move forward the opposite foot, okay? Three, two, one, and go. Pull, push, pull, push. Here is to making sure we're getting lots of touch on the ball, but also making sure with our push, we're pushing the ball in a forward direction, not to the sides, okay, forward. When we're pulling, we're pulling the ball back towards where we originally started, okay. So, really key that we get those movements, um, obviously on target, or say on target, but in the right path and direction of the movement which you want to go, okay. So, that's soul pushing and pulling. Then, we're going to do some soul rolls. So, this time, stand side on. Okay, stand again where you started before, but this time in a side on position. And what you're going to do is using the sole of your left foot, okay, you're going to roll the ball to the opposite side, okay. Then your right, then your left, then your right, then your left. Key thing we're doing here is again no real sort of um, strenuous physical activity. It's all about just getting lots of touch on the ball and really figuring out how we make these movements, um, how we execute them, okay, how we make them effective. So with the sole rolls, okay, it's again very similar to push and pull, except for this time I'm rolling the ball, okay, in either my left direction, my left direction, or my right direction. That's the key thing here, okay, I'm rolling it to the side again. Get lots of touches on the ball. Okay, some people will advance play by more at once, more time, like that. Okay, you can do that if you want to. Go a bit more advanced. That's okay. Do those one touches. So I'll roll it left and right. Like so. Making sure it goes on the opposite side of our gate, of our gap. But um, less advanced players. Um, newer players to the game of football, okay? Just little touches. So right. So left. So right. So left. So 
right hand. Go left. Whoop. Go right hand. Go left. Go right. Go left. So on. Okay, and so on. So, key thing here is we're looking at the technique of pushing, pulling the ball, and, and rolling it to our left and our right sides of our body, okay? Um, key thing, I think, is not to touch on the ball. Um, really making sure that we're getting comfortable being on both our left and our right foot, okay? And like I said, for more advanced players, you may look at just more of those um, one touches, which is making the ball travel over a little bit of a longer distance, okay? Um, and obviously the ball traveling a bit quicker speed, so we're having to react quicker with our opposite foot to roll it back into the opposite direction. Lots of repetition in this one. Give it a try, see how you get on. Cool, so that was our full mastery exercise. Now some of the key points to take away from that is all about repetition and understanding how to use the sole of the foot, okay, to effectively move the ball in different directions. So being able to push the ball forwards, pull the ball backwards, okay, and roll the ball using the sole of the foot, either to the left or to the right, okay? And it's all just about repetition and becoming comfortable and confident in actually executing those movements and understanding how to actually push, pull, and, and roll the ball in these different directions, okay? Doing it at speed, getting lots of touches on the ball, and just really understanding how to actually execute these movements with the ball, okay? So repetition is key, and it's all about using our left foot and our right foot and the combination between the two, just to become comfortable and confident in doing so, okay? That's crucial um, within executing techniques and, and gaining a better understanding of how to actually execute these movements potentially within a game, okay? So repetition is key with that one. Cool, now we're gonna move into our next exercise, which is our accuracy challenge, and for this one, you're gonna need a space, you're gonna need a flat surface, so such as a wall or a door, whether you're indoors or outdoors, okay? And you're also gonna need a chair, so I've got a chair just behind me, making sure that there's a gap in between the legs, and you also need a ball. So once you've got your space, once you've got your flat surface, and once you've got your chair and your ball, we're ready to go. Cool, so for this accuracy challenge, what you're going to do is you're going to set up your area like so. So you're going to have your chair, making sure your chair obviously has um, legs which the ball can actually travel through, making sure there's enough space in between that area for the ball to go through, okay, and making sure it's just in front of your flat surface because we'll be using that as we come on uh, to progress throughout the exercise, okay. Basically, what's going to happen to begin with, start with the ball just in front of your um, chair and your flat surface. Okay, using the inside of your feet, okay, left foot and right foot, we'll start with just one foot predominantly to begin with. Okay, what's going to happen? I'm going to pass it through and then receive it again. Okay, pass it through, receive. Pass it through, receive. Receive. If it hits one of the legs, don't worry. Okay, just clear the ball and carry on. But see if you can get in a nice rhythm, a nice routine, and a nice rally. Okay, that's good. making sure throughout this exercise, okay, to help us with the accuracy, that our inside of our foot is parallel to that gap in between our chair, okay, and obviously where we want the ball to go. That's gonna help us with the direction and the movement of the ball, okay? We're getting more confident players. You can maybe think about just doing one touch, okay, like so. And also you can think about playing the ball in a little bit harder as well. All right, get a little bit of a nice routine we're gonna go with this. Okay. 
combination of the ball going through in between the chair against the flat surface and then also combination of the ball going up and over the flat or up and over the object the chair okay to make contact with the flat surface control it bring it down and then the third one just a combination of all those different movements left foot right foot different creative ways to be able to get the ball through um, and up and over okay and doing it is a bit of a combination so sometimes going up and over up and over up and over um, and then also sometimes going over over up up and so on okay just being as creative as you can getting lots of repetition getting lots of opportunities to become comfortable and confident in executing movements give it a try be creative see how you get on cool 
So that was our accuracy change. So remember some of the key points to take away from that is that it was all about trying different techniques of understanding how to obviously move the ball in a straight line or in a straight direction, so forward direction, okay? We were using the inside of our foot, making sure that the inside of our foot was parallel um, in between the gap or the space, okay? Um, and obviously thinking about the type of power, speed and weight to actually put behind the pass, being able to make sure it goes accurately and also comes back to us, okay? And then also we thought about using different techniques of understanding how to get the ball up and over our object, okay, up and over the chair um, to make contact with the flat surface. Again, we thought about maybe using um, a technique where we're chipping or scooping the ball so it goes up and over, making sure the front part of our foot, our laces area, um, is parallel to the wall, okay, um, or the flat surface once the ball actually leaves our, our, our foot. Um, and then also as well, thinking about how we can maybe use a, a kick up or a ball juggling technique to actually get the ball up in the air first of all, and then possibly using different parts of the feet to make contact with the ball and to be able to make it go accurately towards our flat surface. So either using the inside of our foot um, or again, that front area, laces area, okay? Thing with this one, Repetition, as I always say, is key because we're learning different techniques, okay? So it's really important that we actually just get some ideas of what works effectively, okay? Um, thinking about uh, the type of repetition that is needed because again, if we do it, sometimes it's gonna come off, sometimes it won't come off as you saw within the exercise, okay? And just really trying to understand that the more you perform these movements, the more you execute them, the more comfortable and confident you'll be, uh, be able to effectively perform them as well. Um, and key thing as well is really trying to think about understanding um, how to combine these movements together as well because you're not always going to repetitively be passing it on the ground sometimes it might need to go up in the air so when we added in those combinations it was just about how to react effectively um, and quickly to be able to actually perform these movements cool now we're going to move into our next exercise which is our ball juggling challenge and for this one you're going to need a space you're gonna need a ball, and then you're gonna need two, three, or four objects, depending on the level of challenge that you want, okay? But they're gonna to need to be t-shirts or possibly even tea towels. Now, what you're going to need to do is they're gonna be having to try and uh, tie, be tied to each other, so something like this, okay? Um, but like I said, t-shirts possibly effectively work as well, or tea towels, um, but ultimately they need to be able to tie to each other, and it's about two, three, or four objects, depending on your level of challenge, okay? So, once you've got a space, once you've got your two, three, or four objects which you can tie along to each other, and once you've got your ball, we're ready to go. Cool, so for this ball juggling challenge, what you're going to do is here, I mentioned to maybe get two, three, or four objects, but basically, you're gonna put them tied with each other like so, okay? Now the task is this, we're gonna be working on our ball juggling, okay? Um, I'm not gonna add in too many points around technical ways to juggle the ball um, or how to actually touch the ball. So we've done that in previous sessions, okay? But it'll be a combination of using different body parts, it'll be a combination of using different feet, okay? So left foot and right foot, um, and also thinking about making sure that the movement or the touch that we take um, allows the ball to go back up in an upwards direction towards the ceiling or the sky, and if you're inside or outside, okay? Um, to allow me enough time to be able to get on with my task, okay? My psychological task. Now, my psychological task is really this. As I'm performing my ball juggling, okay, I can hold this in whichever way I like, but basically I need to try and undo the knots and the ties in my objects, okay, and then let go until I just have one left. Once I've done that, okay, that will then end my go, and I'll see how long I've done it in, um, and then obviously if I try it again, then I'll try and see if I can beat my time or beat my score, okay? Key thing would be, try not to do these knots too tight, okay? I'm just doing it quite lightly so it allows me enough um, flexibility to actually undo it, all right? So, start off with first round, you're allowed as many bounces in between as you want, okay? Whilst I'm doing this part, because I've got three here, you can obviously have one more, obviously take away into seven and one, okay, it's totally your choice. But basically, full bounce on the floor, okay? You do your kick up, making sure the ball is up in the air. At the same time, you will see that I'm currently trying to undo my knot and my tie. So I've undone one there, Okay, making sure I'm concentrating on the ball, and I've only done my second time there. So that was probably about 10 seconds, all right? So this time, what I'll do, is I'll tie them together again. Okay, so this time I might possibly add on more. That could be another alternative option. Or I'll try and see if I can beat my score, okay? To see if I can do it any quicker. I'm going to add in another one, all right? So I have four instead of three. Okay. Just make sure obviously that um, they are connected. It creates a bit of a tougher challenge. There we go. And 
knee help with pain or making a knot, you can get a tear in, or somebody a bit older to do that as well. Okay, this time I said, I've got four now, so again, I see how long it's taking to do this one, all right? So again, back to the around in between. Making sure the ball doesn't go flat, dead onto the ground. Again, that's trying to see if I can make sure that movement and the touch of the ball allow the ball to go in an opposite direction. So allow me enough time to react. Get on. Just at the end there, okay? It's probably a bit um, under, not under control, but we'll keep it moving, alright? So, this time, okay, for the second challenge, the final part of the challenge, I'm only going to use three again. I could progress to four if I needed to after a while. But this time, no bounces in between. Okay, no bounces in between. If the ball bounces, my advice would be put the um, items back together and then start again, okay? So you really want to try and challenge yourself now, okay? And understand how to get level up and also when to make So, I have to play together, this time, no bounces, okay? So really thinking about keeping that ball under control, okay? Not just running around painlessly after the ball. I've got one. We're moving different parts of the body. So that's not right for. And there we go, okay? I've managed to get all three undone, all right? So, I'll give it one more go with four items tied together. But the key thing is here is that we're just making sure that that ball is number one, um, under control. So our jumping movements are under control. Okay, it's not just like this aimlessly just being kicked up um, and it's forcing us to obviously run around aimlessly after it. Um, and also as well, really trying to make sure that the ball goes high enough, but not too high, but just high enough for us to be able to actually um, react, move, uh, and also get on with our um, psychological task of undoing or not. All right, so start again. While the control is in here. Oh, see, it's dropped there already, so then I'll have to start again. All right, so we're on the control. Oh, it's dropped again. So you can add on more, more, as many more um, items as you want to, so making a challenge tougher, okay? Really try and challenge yourself by having different touches on the ball. Uh, understand how using different parts of the body have different outcomes. But like I said, this one, not too many technical points, all about fun and a challenge, okay? Just understanding of how to take different touches and understanding of how to basically do two tasks at the same time. Good fun to get on with, see how many items you can do um, and see how long it takes you each time, okay? So time yourself, and see if you can beat that score um, every time you restart, all right? Give it a try, see how you get on. Cool, so that's the end of session 35. So just very quickly to recap on some of today's key points, okay? So today, it was very technique heavy, okay? It was about trying to be creative, find different ways, explore different ways of actually performing and executing these movements, okay? So such things as obviously our ball mastery, using the sole of a foot, push a ball in different directions, okay? Obviously with our accuracy challenges, it's all about understanding how to actually um, make our movements of the ball in terms of a path, so making sure that the ball moves in a um, straight direction or towards our target, then thinking about different ways to get the ball up in the air and over our target as well, okay? And then obviously with the ball juggling challenges, it's all about understanding the type of touches and controls, using different parts of the body, different parts of the feet, to actually make the ball travel back up as well, okay? And obviously we started off with a bit of ball movement, which is all about, just like I said, getting 
and some changes of direction and some changes of speed with it. But with our techniques, it's key that we do lots of repetition. Listen, sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't work, but that's why it's so important to explore, be creative, and try a different way of doing things, okay? To find the most effective way and also understand how using different parts of our feet, different parts of our body will effectively create different types of outcomes, okay? But some really good fun ones today, some really good challenging ones as well. But again, like I said, repetition is key because not all the time it will come off. Cool. As always, I really hope you enjoyed today's sessions. Please make sure that you subscribe, like, comment, interact with the video, let us know how you get on, especially if in some of those challenges, it would be really good to hear some of your feedback in terms of the scores or, or successes that you've got within them, okay? Um, let us know any type of sessions which you wanna see coming up, because again, we wanna make them as relevant as we can to you, okay? But as always, good luck with the sessions, I hope you enjoy them, and I look forward to seeing you at the next session. Take care, and I'll see you soon.